College Park, Georgia, only 20 minutes from downtown Atlanta, this suburb is home to the world's busiest airport. And just down the street from the tarmac is a smokehouse called Michon's, opened in 2002 by the Wilson family. I used to be in, in sales, but I've always wanted to own a restaurant, especially a barbecue restaurant. So that's what I decided to do. Our daughter is Natalie Michon, and we decided that that was a great name for the restaurant because our passion, our goal was to pass it to Natalie. Enjoy. The restaurant did great. This was my daddy's baby. With Mr. Al being at the top, it made everything work really smoothly. It's out of college right here. Things went good, you know, for a long time here. And unfortunately, you know, Al had got sick and he had to have an operation. My dad had a collapsed lung. The doctor told my dad just to stay home and take a break. Chest started hurting a little bit, so I need to really go lay down. A lot of things have gone downhill in the kitchen since Al has been out. Excuse me, when was the brisket smoked? Because it's cold. Since Mr. Al is sick, the cooks do what they want to do. We're a capitalist ship. Yeah, whatever, dude. Go take a nap, dog. Our food is nasty. And then when you go to take it back to get another plate, they'll complain about it or they'll argue. Don't come outside kicking. Then you touch your customer's hands, do And I don't come back here dropping smoke wings, do I? But if it tastes like shit, don't nobody want to eat that. The majority of the stuff in here is already prepped. Like the smoke meats, you're reheating those. All the sides are ready. All you're doing is scooping and putting it in a bowl. Is everything OK? The customers are walking out of here unsatisfied. It was slow as hell out here yesterday. What I would love to see is my daughter run the place, but she's just not doing, you know, the, the job. You never see Natalie in the kitchen. You may see her in passing, or maybe she's hungry. Can you hand me a, a, spoon, a fork or a spoon, please? She'll come in and get her some breakfast, or just come in and rub her stomach. That's good. Natalie pretty much feels she can pass the book. I'm ready to go home. Al and I have a certain work ethic. Natalie does not necessarily share that work ethic. The type of manager that I am, I'm more hands off. I'm a little bit more relaxed when it comes to problems. It's too much wasted energy to be frustrated. Well, I have cameras that spotted around the restaurant that I can check from my house, and, and I'm seeing things but not going like it should be. Everyone set their macaroni and cheese back. Between the bills, the rent, and all of the overhead, you know, we like $200,000 in the hole. We are really at the point now where we need Chef Ramsey to just help us, or it will be the end of the road. Before heading to the restaurant, Chef Ramsey has agreed to get together with Michon's owner, Al, who requested a meeting. Hey, uh, Ron. How are you? Hal. Good yeah, to see you. Yeah, thanks for meeting me here. Not at all. Good yeah. to see you too. Please yeah. take a seat. Oh, OK. Good to meet you. Yeah, same here. Um, talk to me. The restaurant, it's uh, family run, my daughter and, and my wife. But uh, you know, I really want to retire, to be honest with you. Right. I just need to get my daughter to take over and run it. But... So the plan's for you to hand the reins over to her? Correct. Because I've been in sort of bad health. Oh, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, and it's still giving me some problems. And you mentioned your daughter. How old is she? Uh, she's 32. 32. And so how capable is she? She has the smarts. Right. You just need to get get it out of her. Right. I mean, it sounds like she's been handed this amazing restaurant on a plate. Correct. And you're frustrated that she can't take the reins. And go with it. And go with it. That's it. And when you had the medical problem, and obviously you're out of the business, how did that run then? Not really. Go out and it fell apart. Right. I was watching it the best I could. So you were watching from home? Yeah, I got my little my security cameras I can see from my house and from the restaurant. You watch your restaurant on a security camera? Yeah. I got about 18 cameras. 18 cameras? Yeah, 18. Ow. I just like to see what they do. <laughs> That's it. Well, I'm going to get myself into the restaurant, and I'm going to have a good look yes. around. Okay. With my eyes, not your cameras. Thank you. I'll see you back at the restaurant. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Okay. I'll drive carefully. Okay. Thanks, Al. Well, 
beautiful building. Wow. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you? Fine, how are you? Nice to see you. Okay. Nice to see you, Gordon. Right. Hi. How Natalie. Are you? I'm Natalie, good. How nice are to see you? you. So, um, the Michon name came from... My middle name is Michon. Ah, OK. So the restaurant's been named after you. Right. Wow. The decor is stunning. Look at this place. Thank you. Um, so, I met your uh, amazing dear husband earlier. I had a quick catch-up, and he told me a few things. Um, I'd love to know from both of you, um, your role is what? Well, I love being up front with the customers. Right. And your main role in a day-to-day -day business? The human resources, HR. Wow. So I do payroll and different things like that. So I hide in the back a lot. You hide in the back? <laughs> I stay in the back. I do a lot of the paperwork and okay. different things like that. So you're not really functioning in the restaurant. And according to Al, there seems to be things right now that you could do that you haven't been doing. Really? When was the last time you took pressure off him? Mm. Are you always this flat? No. No. I'm just soaking in how you said so I'm not doing much. Yeah, no, I just like, wow, oh, God, if that was my father and mother yeah. would get me a restaurant like that with my neighbor at the door, I don't want to be sleeping here. Mm -hmm. I would be doing a little bit more than uh, HR. I'm dying to taste the food, yeah, please? He basically told me that I'm just kind of like the lazy child with just my name on a building. That pisses me off, and I feel disrespected in my own restaurant. He said, you don't do anything here but payroll? No, you didn't throw me under the bus. You threw me up under the train. Thank you very much. You're very yes. welcome. I'll let you look through the menu, and I'm going to bring you just starter wings. Is that OK? Brilliant. Right. Thank you. OK. What I'm looking forward to Chef Ramsay doing is to say things to Natalie that I would not dare say. Because we are her parents, it's more than a business relationship. There is the personal relationship. Hello, how are you doing today? How are you? I'm doing fine. Welcome to Michonne's. My name Thank is Tadisha. I'll be your server this evening. It's a lovely name. Hair looks immaculate. My goodness me. He ain't never seen a beautiful, thick black girl like me, so that's what that was. He liked all these curls and stuff. Are you that high maintenance, or is it just a special day today? It's a special day today. <laughs> we don't make hardly any money here, so I ain't about to pay this every week. Mm -mm. Um, you've been here how long? I've been here for two and a half years. Two and a half years. Yeah, in your mind, what's wrong? What's the biggest issue here? Management. Management. Wow. So what does Natalie do? Um. Truthfully. What's her role? She makes sure we get paid. Mm-hmm. And that's about it. Right. OK. Now, Lee, she got issues. She lays it. I said it. That's, it is what it is. OK. Let's start off with smoked chicken, gourmet salad. OK. Beef uh, brisket, pork ribs. And what side? Cornbread, mashed potatoes, and the potato salad as well. Potato uh, salad? We can't do because we don't have it. No potato salad? No. Really? Yeah, the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Kitchen one? They don't like to peel potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's true. OK. Green beans, please, and baked beans. Obviously, black eyed peas. OK, I didn't hear you say sweet potato oh, souffle. Yeah. OK. Yeah, Collard greens, mac and cheese, please. Well, I'll go ahead and get your food. Yes, please. Oh, thank you. And that is the mm, smoked chicken wing. And when were they smoked this morning? They were smoked this morning. Lovely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Smells nice. Right. So Enjoy. Three. Thank you. Damn. It's dry. What a shame, because the sauce is lovely. But me, it's all dry. That's disappointing. So I'm anxious to know what you thought. Yeah, do you know what? A bit inside it was dry. Yeah. Was it? Yeah, will you just find out when they were smoked? I will. Thank you. Thank you. I'm shocked that Chef Ramsay does not like our smoke wings. That just pisses me off, because he's definitely wrong. Um, thank you. You're uh, What a shame they were dry, the chicken. <laughs> Welcome to Michonne's. Yeah, at least they should be moist. Why would they be dry? Because it's bootleg. Bootleg? Mm-hmm. They just don't care. Thank you. Wow. Is this this morning's batch? These are just today's batch. This is yesterday's batch. OK, chef, I have to eat crow. Those are yesterday's wings. Damn. See, I knew they didn't taste fresh. And why are they oh, serving yes. yesterday's wings today? Can't I get today's wings today? I don't know. Oh. Anyway, just asking. All right, all right. 
Are we ready to rock and roll? Gourmet salad and all these sides. Okay. Let's go. Okay. Let's go. Yes, I know. Oh, there we go. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, God, that was quick. Really, man. Here you are, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. That's my uh, smoked chicken gourmet salad. Um, gross. The rotten tomatoes. Oof. Where's my lovely lady? Where, I'm where? right here. I'm sorry, though, but the tomatoes, they got old and sort of yucky and soggy. I wasn't shocked at all. Thank you, please. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the kitchen? Yeah, they don't care. Um, the, uh, uh, um, mm. the tomatoes, one of them is old, and the other one has, like, a ripe thing on it. I don't think it's a problem, but... <laughs> Really? But I'm not a chef, so I don't, you know, I don't know. I think it's fine. But that's right. Your name is only on the bell bell. Get it right. They look dry. It is dry and chewy. But it should sort of fall off the bone, but it's just dry. Cornbread. Oof. Now, that's really dry. Look, it's just like being in the Sahara Desert. Look, it's like a mouthful of sand. It's like sand in an hourglass. Girl, they done fucked up all this man food. Damn. They mess up everybody's food. Hmm. Black eyed peas. Wow. Hideous. Absolutely shocking. All right, here we are. All right, sit down. Sit down. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah, right. Close your eyes. Okay. What the hell? Do not open your eyes. I don't want to eat that. Our food is nasty. Open up. Mmm. What does that taste of? Nasty. What was that? Mm, black eyed peas. You can open them now. Yeah, they nasty. Black eyed bullets. He hit the nail on the head. We got some problems. Thank you. You're welcome. I need a drink at the Disney. I'm in Georgia, right? Yeah. Now I feel like I'm in prison. Huh? They're dreadful. Baked beans. Damn. Hmm. Color greens. Wow, gross. Way too sweet. Hideous. Beef brisket. Damn. It's rubbery. Dry and chewy. Look at that. You could pass that for beef jerky. It's like a, it's like a dog chew. I don't know too much about smoking. I don't even know nothing about cooking, but I know that ain't right. Wow. OK, can you take me through the kitchen? There's going to be some shit around here. Serve a brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Oh, God, here comes the chef. After sampling the menu that can best be described as miserable, serving brisket like that, I don't know where the fucking start. Chef Ramsay wants to have a little chat with the people who are responsible. Oh, God, here comes the chef. Where's Al? Dad. Yeah. Come in, please. So this is Archie. Archie. And this is Terrence. Terrence. Yes, sir. Hey, no, sir. Good to see you, bud. And this is Terrell. Terrell, come over, bud, so I can see you. And this is Kelvin. Kelvin. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, another chef. Come through. Joe. Joe. So, who's the head chef? Does anyone know? I don't do the cooking, but I'm a you don't do the No, sir, not the uh, small meat. Something not quite right here. What do you do here? I smoke some meat. Was there anything that I tasted today that was smoked today? Uh, brisket. This piece of shit here was smoked today. No, not today. Not today. Does that look appetizing? No, sir. That does not. When was that cooked? I believe on Saturday. On Saturday? So today's Tuesday. Do you honestly think that customers would walk through that door thinking that you're smoking meats three or four days before eating them? How are you eating them? Microwaving them. Microwaving them. Come on. It's disgusting. For God's sake. Is there anything today that I ate that wasn't microwaved? The salad. 
Yeah. You fucking donut. Of course you don't put no, a fucking... Than it wasn't you. Guys, I'm not laughing. I'm seriously disappointed. And Natalie, you don't need me in here to tell you that brisket is like dog chew. If my parents named a restaurant after me, I'd make sure that was the fucking best smoked brisket. Your daughter doesn't do what needs to be done to get this restaurant back in shape. It's just, you know, I don't have the words for it right now. I don't know what to say. I'm just fuck it up. I'm lost for words. After a lunch that was almost entirely microwaved, Chef Ramsay braces himself for his first observation of a dinner service. Good evening. Welcome to Michonne's. And for you, sir. Okay. All right, y'all. Let's go for round two. <laughs> Chop pork working hard, homie. What's that noise? The microwave. Fucking hell, the microwave. What is that? That's seafood dip. Three rib tips. That's how they do things. They're just throwing stuff in the microwave, and it's ridiculous. Jeez, what are they there? Rib tips, rib tips. What's with all the bag stuff? They portion everything and put it in bags. It's just madness. You're not even cooking, you're just reheating. Where's all this coming from? I don't know. That's how we've been reheating it. Have you been to another restaurant in Atlanta? Have you seen another restaurant? I haven't been in another You've kitchen. You've never been to another kitchen, now. It's tearing me up inside of them. I've never okay. seen it like this. I mean, ever. Chef Ramsay is criticizing every single thing that we do. Just because he doesn't like it doesn't mean that it's wrong. Show me the smokers. All right, this please. One. Wow. Look at them. I mean, do you know what hurts more than anything? The fact that we, we have the most amazing equipment and yet the product is shit. Brisket, turkey, chicken, smoked in these. Then we slice it, bag it, chill it, then we reheat it in the microwave. Right. Does that make sense? Could you have another, please? Wow, look at that. So how long have they been in? How long have they been cooking? Yeah. Hey, so they went in two and a half hours ago. So they're ready for dinner. Yeah, right. ready. These, little taste. Now, that's delicious. That's what I'm screaming for. They're, right. they're ready. They're delicious. Right. We're reheating yesterday's fucking wings, and they're just immaculate. Natalie, don't open the door, then disappear. I need to talk to you urgently. So we have Rolls Royce and smokers here. Pretty amazing. And you've got these that are literally minutes off the smoker. Right. And yet we can't hold them and serve. That's what we were trying to figure out. It's a no-brainer. Natalie hasn't proven to be able to run this restaurant. It's not any structure. It's just a bunch of guys doing their own things. That does not make sense. How much do those smokers cost? They Roughly. cost um, 17000 each. 17 grand each? Yes. So here you are, cooking to perfection and reheating the food in a $200 microwave. How does that make sense? While the fresh, tasty meat from the smoker gets held for another day, the kitchen sends out plate after plate of reheated food. Beef brisket. Not moist. And not surprisingly, there is disappointment in the dining room. Let's try it. Did that go out? It's like a dog shat on the side of it. Oh, no. Go on. The chicken's really, very dry. Yeah, they're right. Tell me, the bone's dry. Guys, this brother's supposed to be well done. Leave me alone. Where's all that going? They didn't like them. All right. Yeah. They just said they didn't like them. Natalie did nothing. This is your business, and y'all don't care. Fuck me. Is that normal for so much food to come back? Yes, yes. The whole place is disorganized. It's running with no leader. Absolutely right. It was such a disappointment because Natalie is letting us down. She needs to step up to the plate. As dinner comes to an end, Gordon's inspection of the kitchen is just beginning. What's that in there? Chicken's cooked six days ago. And in here? That, there were the ones yesterday. And these ones in here? And these ones in here? But if you cooked them yesterday, why did they cook them yesterday? Look, there must be a 1,000 wings there. These people don't even deserve to be running a restaurant, let me tell you. I have never seen so many wings in all my life. Piping hot, stuck in a refrigeration unit. I suppose it's what you call winging it. And 
Yes. There's more. That is nasty. I mean, it's like a mass grave. At $1.67 a wing. Look at that. Appalled by his discovery of how much of the food is pre-cooked. Look, there must be a 1,000 wings there. Chef Ramsay is determined to give Natalie and her kitchen staff a massive reality check. Can you just come in the kitchen with me? Please, uh, all of you, thank you. Let's go, let's go. What the fuck? Wow. Are you kidding me? Oh, my god. Wow. Oh my god, why do you have 100 smoked wings? Like, you can't be for real. I am absolutely mortified. What in the hell is going on? We've served 100 customers, and we're carrying all this food until tomorrow, or the next day, or who knows? And we have a smoker in there full of fresh wings. And I could have cried to think that this was served first before the fresh ones. I've never seen a more fragmented, disorganized setup. I've never, ever seen anything like this. Just looking at that food on the counter like that, I'm like, wow, really, really shocking. You know, I look at it like, you know, that could be going in my pocket as far as, you know, as a raise or whatever. You've got the most equipped kitchen ever a stunning dining room, and look at the amount of staff in here. But all the advantages can't fix the mentality of how we're working, with our head up our ass, rudderless. The biggest problem, the system. Tell me about it. And you accept it because you send it. You confirm that's good enough. You have your name in lights, and you can sit there and depend on your parents for another 30 years. Someone's going to have to step up. If these are what we cook this evening, at the end of the evening, do we throw them away? It's easy. How many, how many customers do we have tonight? 100. How many portions of wings do we sell? Roughly 25? Yep. That stops there. I don't need to tell you that. I just think you're in denial. No, I'm not in denial. I'm, I'm learning. But darling, by learning needs getting involved, taking responsibility. All right. Natalie, can I have a word with you, please? Everybody else just stay here. Count the fucking wings. I had no clue Chef Ramsay would be this critical. Chef Ramsay does not understand a lot of the ways we do things here. He was overboard. You've got your name in lights. This restaurant's named after you. Tell me one to one why you haven't stepped up. Just because you don't, I'm not gonna sit up here and holler and scream. No one's asking you to holler. And you know what? I wouldn't walk around like Little Miss Perfect. And I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Yes, you do. The biggest problem is you never heard it enough. Okay. Being brought into this world with a silver spoon, you can't sponge. I will. You have to get off your ass and do something about it. What are we gonna look at? Your father? Get mum to step up? Honestly. Hand the reins over and let's get somebody else in here if you are not going to step up to the plate. I'm not just walking in here every day not doing anything. You are. Get your head out of the fucking smoker. You've been handed a restaurant on a plate, a stunning restaurant, and yet you don't seem to bother. I'm very bothered. You blow smoke up my ass? How dare you? I'm the HR manager. I would have had you fired in two minutes. The bottom line is, you don't want it. Joke. You're right. It is clear that Natalie's lack of leadership has resulted in a frustrated and ineffective staff. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning yeah. To get through to her, Gordon has asked the family to stay in the office so they can observe a staff meeting by way of the surveillance cameras. That was a crazy 24 hours, right? Yes. So for me, I want to find out what the issues are. There's the kitchen lacking a leader. Yes, yes. Like, that's yes. where all our problems come in. So that's why they all act like that. Sure, but I mean, who decides who's working where? In the kitchen, who does they the time job? They just gotta fall into place. You do your own? Yeah. Well, when you come in, I, what? To, to, to save the frustration and get through the thing, when we come in, I ask you where you want to work at. 
Seriously? Seriously. Okay, why do they keep switching people around? If we know Keno is the strongest in the middle, why on Fridays and Saturday night Keno is in the damn back prepping food? It makes no sense and that's to me. Where we're gonna suffer. Why is that? If you're not gonna work where we need you, how are we gonna get stuff done? The thing done? is, in the key work, it's not consistent. This is my thing to y'all. We get, well, we don't have this. Once we've gotten to a table and rung a table in, oh, didn't we tell y'all we don't have it? That is not the most, that's like dumb. Half the time we tell y'all, y'all don't listen. You know what, I mean? what you want me to show you the empty bucket? No. No, I don't want you to show me an empty bucket. I didn't say Come that. Down. It was all on you. I'm it's, saying it's a two-way street, but guess what? But Big stuff will steal stuff. Everything's just run down, dwindled. Pretty much everybody just do what they want to do. Everybody's going at each other because it's, it's just you know, no one running things. So everything is just hostile. If we had a leader in that kitchen, this place I honestly believe would be like night and day. But we need that direction. Are we not gaining direction from Natalie? No. Who? No. Natalie doesn't step up to the plate as she should. It's so aggravating. This is your establishment. I mean, come on. But bottom line, the ship ain't gonna move without a captain. That's it. Got to have some leadership, sir. Period. It's so frustrating. No one's, no one's got the reins. And it's heading for disaster. OK, just give me two seconds, please, yeah? It was painful to see and hear a lot of that conversation. I feel like a lot of the blame came on me today, and it hurts. There's a cry for help there. Otherwise, none of you'd be here. They are begging for, for guidance, for a right. leader, for a captain, for a, a guiding light, an inspiration that's here. You know, 10, 12 hours a day, and that's finding that structure. Right. You know, this is serious. Natalie, do you think you are ready to step up and grab the bull by the horns and shake this place? I know I'm ready to step up. Do you want to? I want to. Come with me two seconds. Come up. Gay, yeah, come over. Please. I want to hear from you telling your parents, yeah, how much you want this and what it means to you. Um. Dan, you said to me, and you said I didn't do this for nobody else but you. And you said you can either run the business and take it on, or you can decide to sell it. I wanted to make sure that my dad's vision and my dad's dream came true. And I'm going to work hard to make sure that's what it is. And I, will, I, I want you to trust me. Yes. Are you happy with that? Happy with that. I'm looking for a big hug. <laughs> really amazing her telling me and my wife that she can do it. And I hope she'll refocus herself to, to really get the business and keep it going. If you're ever, ever gonna let go, now's the time. Shines is a, a very important legacy to my father. This is his whole life, so I'm here for him. Now that Natalie has expressed her commitment to do what it takes to lead the restaurant. I know I'm ready to step up. And I want you to trust me. Chef Ramsay is committed to her. First of all, I was very touched watching you step up and telling your parents how much you want this. Do you know what? I believe you. I'm by your side now, 110%. Okay. Don't be scared of making mistakes. Don't worry about that. Okay. Yeah, I've made thousands. Chef Ramsay has opened my eyes to a lot. At first, I was kind of skeptical, I was kind of hurt, but I trust his judgment now. I've got something very important to discuss with you. I want you to nominate someone that's going to step up and become your head cook. Someone that mends the smoker, that coordinates the purchasing, that controls okay. everything. Running through your mind now. Let's go to the kitchen. The kitchen lacks a leader, and that's where I need to start first. All right, guys, listen two seconds, please. Natalie wants a quick word with you all. All right, gentlemen. So this is going to be some new waters right now for all of us. Terrence, you've been here for years. You've always had your heart in the right place. From here on out, I want you to be the head of this kitchen. Good. For Natalie to make me a leader in this kitchen, I'm very excited about it. I'm ready for the challenge. 
let's get this team rolling and make sure that we have put forth 100%. Got it. It felt great to take the reins. This is the way it's supposed to be. I finally have a sense of where I need to go to move this restaurant forward. You've got the badge now. Step up to the plate. That's it. Yeah? Yep. Good. Now that the restaurant's leadership is in place, Chef Ramsay has an important transformation of his own to present to the staff. Morning. How Good are morning you? Morning to you all. Nice to see you. First of all, where's Al? He's at home resting. Good. OK, it's time to show you a menu deserving of this beautiful restaurant. Ready? Yes. Ready. Come over to the bar, please. Oh, goodness. Wow. Hey. Hey. Darling, please take one and pass them along. New menu. It's easy to read. It's just a lovely, straightforward, stunning menu. And more importantly, <laughs> There's not a restaurant anywhere in a 100-mile radius that has spent the money you spent on those smokers. Those smokers is equivalent to having four other members of full-time staff in your kitchen. You just wasn't using it properly. So with the way we've incorporated it, it's the backbone of the menu. OK, let's start off at the top here. A pulled pork sandwich done with delicious corn puree running through the middle. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yes. Absolutely amazing. Next to that, we've got the most amazing beef brisket. Ooh. A stunning half chicken, delicious. Smoked chicken wings. Look at the size of them. Do we need to serve any more than that, than a portion? And I the sauces. Every table has those amazing sauces. It's so. beautiful. It's, it's the look that I want to put out there. I feel great. Yeah? I'm so happy. I have a special gift for you because you are now running this place. I'd like to introduce you to someone very special, Chef Adam. Morning. How are you? Great, how are you? Good to see you. This young man, he's an expert in barbecue. He's been trained under Tom Calicchio. I've arranged for him to be with you for the next month. Great. What do you think the smokers back there? They're brilliant. I'm very excited. So, a guiding light, a huge support, and you, if you don't pick up on this and stay close to this guy for the next month, Hey, you don't have to worry about that. You're crazy. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. <laughs> Chef Adam is a lifesaver, and I don't even think he realizes how much, you know, I love him already. OK, bud. Thank you. Thank you. See you shortly, yes? Nice to meet you. I'm ready to eat. I'm looking at all this food, and I'm oh, ready to eat. Dig in, dig in, dig in. Oh, wow, yes. Oh, my god, mm. that is good. It was absolutely delicious. I am past excited about selling fresh products. I think I could do a cartwheel in the dining room if there weren't so many tables in here. You know your ribs is good, but you can use your fork to break it apart. Everything tastes so good. Oh, my God. I need a plate. I am very proud to sell this food. I hope that this new menu is symbolic of change to show that we'll just keep rising to the top. Now, who going to wheel me out of here? That's what I want to know. With the relaunch approaching, Terrence gears up for his new role as head chef. Chef Kino, you ready to roll? Got my game face on, boss. And Natalie, with the support of her new consultant, Adam, embraces her new role as leader. If there's ever a time to make your mark, it's tonight. Right. Hold the reins and let them know that you're the boss. OK. Let's go, baby. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm very anxious to show Chef Ramsay that I can do this. I can be the machine of machines. As the doors open for Michon's relaunch, diners are lined up around the block, eager to try the new menu. Yeah, it's going to be pretty full, so as soon as you can get here. And to help generate even more positive buzz, Chef Ramsay has invited a group of the city's most influential barbecue experts. This big table here are very, very important, and they have a festival that has 15,000 turn out. This is it. This first impression is going to be this lasting impression. We need to do well. Hello, my name is Michonne. I'm one of the owners here. And I just wanted to personally thank you for coming, because I hear that you guys are <laughs> barbecue folks, too. <laughs> um, thank you for the smoke meat platter. And the fried pickles? All right. The catfish nuggets, it's to die for. Oh, really? Here we go. Who's calling out? Talk to each other, guys. I need a smoked chicken sandwich. Got your smoked chicken sandwich. I need a catfish nugget, please. With Natalie feeling confident that the kitchen is in good shape in Terrence's hands. See, I'll be back in five minutes. Yeah, I've got it, boss. I got it. She heads to the dining room to 
check in on the customers. If you've been here before, you notice we made several changes. As I was walking through the restaurant, I was pumped. All of our meats here that we smoke on premise, our meat is very tender, so. <laughs> I felt good. I was doing my job well, and everything was great. Okay. But minutes later, back in the kitchen, the cooks are having a hard time adapting to the new menu. Where's the fries? I need fries. And are having problems finding a rhythm. Hey guys, we should be waiting for fries. The food is hanging too long. I've got entrees there, entrees there. So you're just stuffed. I'm starving. They wait 30 minutes for their fried chicken. Oh no, 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 come on. I need coleslaw. Talk to me, three beignets. I need them down, please. You're still gonna put the corn on it, yeah? I still want the corn on that. Well, at that moment, I got them overwhelmed, you know, because everyone knows that this food is behind. Guys, we're getting complaints about long ticket time. So now everybody's morale is just like clear. We need to all be off the same page, guys. We've got ourselves in a situation. Customers are complaining. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board clear. I don't know how we're going to turn this around. This is a fucking nightmare. It's 45 minutes into Michon's relaunch. We're getting complaints about long ticket time. And although the cooks are pushing food out, they are not completing an order. And as a result, food is sitting at the pass. I don't want one more dish in that window until we get this board clear. And customers are sitting hungry. I'm starving. Including the VIPs. So they're getting backed up in the kitchen. Okay. okay they're panicking. And all they're doing is they're putting their food up in the window. Okay. One plate on top of another plate. Food's okay. drying out. Okay. So they have to take a breather, clear the board, and start again. Okay. Chef Ramsey pulling me to the side helped me know that it's my job to jump in the kitchen and make sure that the cooks are actually listening. I need a fried catfish, and I need that fish fillet like yesterday. Tara, you know? I need you to listen to me. Yes. I need you to make sure that I start another ticket. Okay. Until we go ahead and clear. Okay. Claude, I really need to make sure that you're focusing and making sure that you're not just putting plates up. All right, y'all, let's roll. Yes, ma'am. Let's start, got a lot of stuff holding up here. I need three wings on the fly, and I'd really got to get the burger because that's holding up the window. Good, keep it going, yeah? I was frustrated because I still got food in the window. Waiting on a fried catfish, guys. But well, Nelly made me settle down. You know, the sky's not falling. Let's just focus, breathe, and get the food out. Come on, line, we've had this hit before. How long am I black and snapper? Black and snapper working hard, chef. While Natalie has helped her kitchen navigate their way back on course. Keep on talking, guys. Let's go. She has also come up with an idea on how to entertain her special guests. Um, I would like to show you our smokers. We had some hiccups, so I took the barbecue festival guys to go out and look at the smokers. Oh. These are our babies right here. These are about four years old. Each smoker holds 700 pounds. Yes, you can. They were just so excited. I like to see people's face light up. We'll have wings on four or five racks at a time. Nice. What's the cook time? The brisket is about 12 to 14 hours, depending on the weight. OK. I think I did pretty good tonight. That's more expensive. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Natalie's quick thinking has not only delighted the barbecue experts, Macaroni and cheese and a souffle, I can go. They're right here. It has also bought the kitchen the time they needed to catch up. Nuggets. Make the nuggets. Enjoy. All right, y'all, how we doing? Too good. Kino, how we doing? Beautiful. OK. Natalie helped us get back on track. Very vocal, very visual, communicating with us. Is this coming out now? This is complete. Then take it. While Natalie has impressed her staff, That's amazing. the menu is a big hit with diners. Mm. Thank you. All right. I'm amazed seeing customers with smiles on their face. We haven't had that in forever, years. <laughs> you know, some of the best ribs I've ever put in my Wow, uh, that's yeah. great. I'm so happy. It was Natalie's night tonight. I think she did a great job. Bye, thank you so thank much. You. Come care. back and thank see us. Thank you. Worked your butts off. For me, the big difference was the way that you still, under immense pressure, worked together. Give yourselves a round of applause. Come on. Come on. OK. And do you know what? You have an exciting, dynamic owner. Tonight, you were tested, and you did a terrific job. Let me tell you. And Al, he wasn't here this evening. God bless him. He's probably watching from his bed. <laughs> OK. 
but you did him proud, let me tell you. Chef Ramsay has been a real influence on Natalie. And now that Natalie is in charge, the future for Michonne's is very bright. Right, well done. All of you, well done. Thank you, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad that Chef Ramsay came down to give me a swift yeah. kick to show me that I can do it and help me show my parents that I can do it. Take care, bud. I didn't realize when Al made his plea that he'd be too ill to be with us here for relaunch night. But this restaurant, led by his daughter now and her loyal staff, made a major transformation tonight. My hope is now that he gets well and has the pleasure of seeing his baby becoming a big success. Wow, how ironic. Two miles from the airport, and you finally earned your wings. Good night, Georgia. After Chef Ramsay left, Natalie showed she is more committed than ever to carrying on her father's legacy. How are you? Welcome to Michonne's. And with Chef Adam's training, Terrence is in complete control of the kitchen. I got another rib and fries. Got you. As for Al, he now has what he always wanted, a successful restaurant run by the one person he built it for, his daughter Natalie. Hampton, Maryland a proud community located just outside of Baltimore and home to Cafe Hunt, a restaurant whose name has special meaning to the local population. And what's your name, Hun? Hun is a term of endearment. When you're being friendly, that's what you say. You say Hun. Baltimore people love the word Hun. It's their word, you know. Yeah, Hun. Opened by entrepreneur Denise Whiting in 1992, Cafe Hun quickly became a local landmark. Cafe Hun hugs you when you get here. It's just food, family, and fun. With her business doing well, Denise decided to capitalize on Baltimore's love affair with the word hun. She not only trademarked cafe hun, but the word hun as well. Denise wanted to make money. She wanted to sell her mugs, her t-shirts, her little knick-knack things, and it backfired. Denise Whiting, the owner of Cafe Hun, and she said she would go after anyone that uses the word Hun. Denise had Baltimore behind her, and then she announced that she trademarked Hun, and that ticked off a big portion of Baltimore. This thing gets spun in this crazy way. They lodge a boycott on the restaurant. I mean, now I'm the villain. I'm the bad person. <sighs> Since the whole Hun controversy, there has been a decline in business, but it's, you know, dropped dramatically. Since all this has started, Denise has taken out her frustration on her staff. Oh, come on. Really? What is this supposed to be? She can be very harsh. I'm surprised that I have anyone left in the kitchen, to be honest with you. I want you to go downstairs, and I want you to give me a roll of paper towels that are perforated. There's one way to do it here my way. What's this, Johnny? Why is it sitting there? Is this for something? When we have somebody that's not able to lead us, we're serving terrible food, and it sucks. Just a heart to cut. Do you want any of my gristle? No. <laughs> it's pretty much been hell. She's not helping in the kitchen. She doesn't even know what she's doing. She's going to run us down to the ground, and if Chef Ramsay doesn't come in, we're screwed. We really are. I'm done. I'll go broke at this rate. It's not fair. And it's not right that these anonymous people that are out there trashing your business and people are listening. Is this what I'm supposed to keep doing? Am I supposed to keep fighting for what I believe in, for what I've spent 20 years of my life just building? After learning of the Hun scandal, Chef Ramsay stops by a local radio station, hoping to get a better understanding as to why the community has turned its back on this restaurant. Today's best music, Mix 106.5. Have the best day ever. We'll see you tomorrow morning. It's JoJo and Reagan. All right, that's a wrap. Morning, guys. Hey, hi. Hi. Hey, is this a good time? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Sure. Well, how are you? I'm Reagan. Reagan, nice good to see you. Hi, JoJo. JoJo, good to see you. Yep. Hi, I'm uh, Sarah. Sarah, nice to see you good all. Good to meet you. Likewise, um, thanks for giving a couple of minutes of your valuable time. Um, I'm dying to find out in terms of a reputation, Cafe Hon. How is the food, Reagan? Oh, I, I've only eaten there two or three times, but the food is uh, is on the back burner. Why? When you talk about Cafe Hun, talk about Denise Whiting. 
She had trademarked the term Hun, which is a cultural icon in Baltimore. I mean, it's, it's a, a term of endearment. Locally. Uh, locally. It's huge in this community. I mean, it just it represents friendliness, this welcoming. Hun is a word that was in our vocabulary in Baltimore wow. long before it was part of a restaurant yes. name. She went to a newspaper and said, I own it. I own the word. Locally, everyone's happy with the name of the restaurant, but they just weren't happy with her trying to own something that belonged to the town as opposed to her, I'm yeah. sure. She was threatening businesses with lawsuits. The lawsuits, I mean, it went that far. She had, had apparently, you know, thrown out some cease and desist letters to people who were using it. She demanded legal fees from somebody that was making tourist stuff with just the word Hun on it that didn't say Cafe Hun. Oh, dear. What's the feeling now? Has the business suffered on the back of that? The people who were most offended were the people in that immediate neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, she's almost become the anti Hun. Yes. Wow. Well, thank you for the insight. Yeah, I'm here to help turn that place around. Let's turn it around. Yeah, but it's yeah. gonna be, let me say, we've got our work cut out <laughs> yeah, already. I haven't even been to the restaurant yet. I haven't even tasted the food yet. Yeah. You thank are. you. Good to see you. Thank you, Han. Good to see you, too. Good to see you. Thank you, Han. Good to see you. Likewise. Do you know how to find the restaurant? Big pink flamingo, you can't miss it. So they get what, like it's a, a big pink flamingo on the outside. Like a full-size flamingo. flamingo. Oh, oh bigger no. than full-size. Uh, it's, it's... 60 feet or so? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> no, seriously. So look for a, a pink flamingo. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. The restaurant with a flamingo. Holy mackerel. Look at the size of that thing. Wow. Are you serious? Look at that. Wow, 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 wow. Hey, how are you? Hello. Hello, Chef Ramsey. How Welcome are you? to Cafe Hunt. My Great name is Deborah Harris, here. manager. Deborah, nice to see you. What is that greasy? I just made a dessert. <laughs> Whipped cream. Whipped cream. Thank you for that. I'm but, sorry. You know, I was just so excited to see him. I didn't even think about washing the whipped cream off. How long have you been the manager? I have been here 13 years. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Well, you and I are going to talk later anyway. Yeah. Um, can, I, yes. can I meet the owner? Can I have a quick sure. word? Sure. Please. Thank you. Then I need Denny's. They're waiting for you. You're waiting for me? Yes. Oh, OK. Oh, this must like be. You like you to meet Chef Ramsey? How are you? <laughs> I'm great. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Um, let's go somewhere quiet, shall we? Okay, catch sure, up. Sure. Spend a couple of minutes. OK. Denise is going to not, she's not going to be herself. I believe she's going to pretend to be that perfect little darling. And I hope that Gordon Ramsay really can see through any facade she will put up. You look unhappy. Mm -hmm. Come on. I know. Why, I why know. are you upset? <laughs> I mean, business pretty much was half of what it was last year. I've taken everything I have and put it in here. I mean, I completely evaporated my small IRA that I had. I sold a house. Everything's gone into here. My last 10000 went in two weeks ago. Oh, my God. I just didn't know what to do anymore. So what happened? How did it start going badly? The problem is I federally registered the Han as a, as a trademark right. uh, years ago. Somebody picks up that I federally registered Han and mm -hmm. starts saying, that I have stolen something from the city of Baltimore. Right. The newspapers, radio, television, they belittled, demeaned. I have people scream at me from across the street, just horrible things. It's got that bad. Oh, yeah. I mean, I was afraid for my life. You felt that threatened? Yeah. For yeah. your life? Yeah. What, death threats? Well, people wishing me dead. Why would they want to be so vicious to you? If they don't know me? I find it hard to believe that it's just because you registered the word Hun and you've done nothing else. Nothing else. There's nothing else that managed to piss off anybody else. I'm, I'm not aware of anything else I've done. Did you not sue anyone? I never sued anybody. You didn't sue anybody? No. Did you threaten to sue anybody? No. I've done my homework before I got here. I did, I, you know See, what? you're not being fair now. Well, I did a cease and desist. You did? I did. Enforce a legal letter threatening to sue someone using that. Now, you've been very devious. Um, you know. 
I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, but I'm not going to extract blood out of the stone. I want to work with you, but make it very different for me when you don't tell me the truth. After being disappointed by Denise's cover-up of the PR problems at Cafe Hunt, time for lunch. Gordon can now begin to focus on the food. Hello. Hello, Chef. And this is... Hi, I'm Janet. Janet, nice yes. to see you, darling. How long have you been here? Almost 20 years. 20 years, wow. And this is... Hi, Lynn. Lynn, nice to see you, darling. How long have you been here? Eight years. Wow. Look at you. Lindsay. And this is... Amanda. Amanda, love the hair. Thank Beautiful. you. Beautiful. <laughs> nice to see you. I do this myself in the bathroom. Wow, wow, wow. The key is hairspray. Hairspray, hairspray, hairspray. Excellent. Enjoy your night. Thank you very much indeed. Wow. Oof. Amanda? Sorry, Diane. Yes, Chef. Two seconds. Who is that on the front cover there? That's Denise. Is that Denise? Yes, that's Denise looking wonderful. <laughs> looking wonderful? Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Sorry. <laughs> wow. Denise thinks that she's a rock star. And everything's just in your face, Denise. Um, right, what would you recommend? The Big Bay Club. It has our shrimp salad and crab cake. Well, let's start off with that, shall we? Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. And I'll go for the much better the mom's. Much meatloaf. better than mom's meatloaf. As in better than mom's at home. Better than your own mom. Yeah. Wow. Okay, great. What else? So I've got to go for the Balmer fish and chips. It's Balmer. 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 Bal Balmer. So it's from like Baltimore. Oh, so you're okay. saying it quickly. Balmer. Balmer. <laughs> it's Balmerese. 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 Oh, Balmerese, right. Say the word Balmer. Balmer. Yes. Thank you, Hon. 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 Short for honey. Honey. Love it. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Hon. 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 Fish and chips, me okay. Now it's in the kitchen, series. Okay, and that's for chef. All right, let's go. All right, we can go on the big bay. You know, I used to just say, you know, serve good food and the people will come. This is what it should always taste like. This is perfect. Well, we continue to serve good food, but the people don't come. Big bay? Is that my big bay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you taking that or you want me to take it? Go ahead. Tower of seafood. Holy mackerel. Big bay club. What's in there? This is a layer of shrimp salad, mm -hmm. a layer of warm crab cake, mm -hmm. bacon, and lettuce and tomato. Thank you. How the hell do you start eating sandwich this wide? Uh, I mean, honestly, squash a little down. I surrender. I have to break it down. Deconstruct it. Mm, wow. The crab is delicious. It's a very pleasant surprise, let me tell you. Got this nice layer of crab, and then these stone-cold shrimp. Underneath, horrible. Amanda? Oh, gross. This bit here, I mean, they, they taste like they're a week old. You might. God, they're ghastly. Taste of the fridge. Mm, it does have a weird aftertaste. It's horrible, that aftertaste. Mm -hmm. It almost tastes like they're tainted. Yeah. That's a mess. I'll leave that one, darling. The chef. Mm -hmm. They said the, uh, said the shrimp tastes, that they had like a weird aftertaste to it, like almost tastes like really? the refrigerator. What's the matter? Hmm. They said they taste like they're old. A lot of the menu items are crap. It's Denise's recipes. It's the way she wants it done. I, I don't understand. This is perfect. Denise never thinks she's wrong. This is perfect. And that's her biggest downfall. You got fries for me? Crispy, please. It's a little dark. Nope. Denise. It's a little dark. It's good enough. Are we happy with this? I'm taking this, Denise. Just take it. Denise does what Denise wants to do. And she won't listen to me. She won't listen to anyone else. No, I should have gone out like that. It's aggravating. English style fish and chips. Wow, English style. Yeah. Holy mackerel. House cut fries from fresh potatoes. And what kind of fish is it? Uh, codfish. Codfish. Mm -hmm. Wow. Is it me or is everything just greasy? No? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you, Diane. Yes, Thank you. <clears throat> Horrible. Fries are not even crispy, they just full mm. of fat. All the batter's soggy. It doesn't even stick to the fish. What a shame. 
madam? It's dry. Fish is dry? Well, the whole batter just sort of it's almost like peels away from it. Those fries, what a shame. You don't like the fries? Well, they're just all soggy. Look at my fingers. Yeah. We have fish and chips. And the tastiest thing on the plate is a tartar sauce. It's a big disappointment. I love fish and chips. What a shame. Wow. So, Chef. The cooks are doing the best that they can with the way they've been told to do things. So it's Nisa's fault. What's wrong? Greasy fish, fry, the batter's just falling off of it. And he said the fries, they were mushy. Really? That's weird. And he squeezed it and all this like grease was all over his hand. French fries, you know, you get some potatoes that are one way and some potatoes are another way. And I'm having a problem with the consistency of the potatoes. I mean, it's just making me crazy. Right. Do you have the meatloaf? Coming off. Like now. Thanks, Dustin. Sure. <laughs> Jeez. And this one is? And the meatloaf. Thank you. Much better than Mom's meatloaf. That is a very bold statement. Thank you. Sure. It's like a flamingo turd just landed on my plate. Wow. Rocky's raw. That's dreadful. What a shame. Damn, that was disappointing. It's the mm -hmm. actual flavor uh, of the meatloaf. Meat love, yeah. And the uh, demi glace is just mm -hmm. so thick. Salt. Sometimes it can be runny. Today it's actually thick. Well, it's just marred everything, like a big, thick varnish that just tastes yeah. of nothing. Whose recipe is this? Um, I believe it's Denise's. Denise's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Better than Mum's meatloaf. Thank God my Mum's not joining for lunch today. <laughs> Thanks, darling. Yes, sir. Wow. And will you ask someone to taste that broccoli? The broccoli's soft. I will, yes. And the yes, mesh chef. is cold. Yes, chef. Okay, he wants you to try the broccoli, so the broccoli is almost raw. <laughs> the mash is cold and the demi-glaze is too thick. And okay. the meatloaf is bland. Okay. Every time he had a comment or a criticism, it's pretty ridiculous. I've been here for 20 years. I had to have done something right. Maybe he's not the answer. Are we done? Um, I go through the kitchen. Let's go and say hello and meet everybody. Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, hello, Chef. Lindsay. Uh, this is Greg. Greg. I'm Tisha. You work under Denise. Denise, yes. Do you think she's going to listen to anything he says? I hope so. I don't think she will. She might snap, freak out like the <laughs> yeah. wicked witch. This is a comfort food restaurant, right? Yes. And when I think of comfort food, I think of meatloaf and other excitement. That's bland. And the Big Bay seafood sandwich? Crap. Delicious, but underneath you've got these stone cold shrimp. It's horrible aftertaste. Fish and chips, the fish is overcooked, the batter is just falling off it. And you hand cut those fries. Yes. They're cooked dreadfully. Do you season them and taste them before they go out? We do not season the fries. You don't season fries? No, we don't. Is this you? Yeah. But you told them they can't season the fry. Fast food joints season fries, for God's sake. Does no one care? I mean, there's not much to say, you know, it's the, what we have. It's the menu that we have laid out, and it's the recipe. Do better. We can. Do you enjoy cooking this? I don't enjoy cooking our menu food. It's, it's dull. I mean, when we do try to change things, you know, it's always, oh, I don't like it like this, you know, we... Who we, doesn't like it? Denise. So you're telling me you can do better than what's on the menu? Yeah. I thought the problems were on the outside. You've got them on the inside and the outside. Combine both, and I'm amazed you're still open. I know that we have a good product, and I'm not going to let anybody get in my way, including Chef Ramsay. After discovering that Denise's food might be as bad as Cafe Hun's PR, fucking flamingo, Chef Ramsay is anxious to see how the kitchen handles a busy dining room. Do this. Tonight. Word has spread that Chef Ramsay is in Baltimore, and the dining room is full for the first time in a year. You got fish and chips working? And the kitchen is now dealing with a flood of orders. Got asparagus for that, and I can get you out of your hair. Yeah. Let's start falling to the table. Let's get there. Mac and cheese. All right, can you fix that asparagus so it's all nice and neat? No, I got three steaks sitting here. I really don't care, Greg. When Denise comes in in her chef clothes, it's like having a hurricane in there. She just goes hectic and, you know, you know, oh, I want this done now, I want it done this way. All right, I want everybody's attention. Can I have everybody's attention? Debbie, I need your attention. Hello? Yes. This is asparagus, all right? I'm tired of seeing the asparagus dumped in a bin all 
different kinds of ways. You know, you start with the small things. We always get little lessons from Denise, and it's frustrating because you just can't stop. Then everything backs up, and it's, it's, it just causes a lot of problems. You cut off the ends, oh and you blanch them. You hold the asparagus and see where they break at so you know where to cut them. That's how it's OK. Do. All right. Ray, table one, you've been waiting a long time. I really, really appreciate it. Everybody's been waiting a long time. I don't have time to stand around and watch her do this when I have other you know, jobs to do. I feel like I'm on the Titanic. I need that crab to bump for 22. Take this to 57. Despite Denise slowing down her kitchen with an asparagus lesson. All right, I'm taking the ab for 17. And that plate is very hot. And then your wings will be right out. Some of the dishes still manage to make their way out to the diners. There's a pool of grease underneath the chicken. Cafeteria would be the way I would describe it. <laughs> there is like a hair. I can't believe there's a hair. The turkey's just like crumbling apart. It doesn't really taste at all. What's wrong with that? Overcooked, and they said that looked like mush. What is that? Turkey was stuffing. They did not like this. I'm getting something oh else. Oh, my God. All right, this turkey, we're not serving it anymore. 86 the turkey. Any turkey on the board, 86 the turkey. I thought I was medium, didn't I? Yes, you did. OK, I'll get it medium. Table five wanted a medium steak. What's wrong? It's a well. Five wanted medium, this is well. Yeah, medium, Mitch. Give me those steaks. I don't want to use those steaks. Give me. Fuck it, give we me, don't have table 52. Give me all those steaks. Put them in there. We alert all servers that we have no steaks. None what? of the orders I have no steaks for. Are you serious? Yes. Took the ones we had, threw them we out. Threw them out. All this? We threw them all out. That's, that's the whole table. Denise threw them out. There's nothing I can do. Table 52. Denise yeah. threw them out. This is something that Denise normally does, 86 and things. 86 biscuits, you guys. They don't like it. 86 the pot pie. 86 the catfish. Instead of fixing an entree, in the moment, she pulls the entire food item from service. 86 Where? the steak. We don't have steak, OK? We don't have to redo everything. Oh, my god. This shit clean. Oh, my god. I swear to god. You guys, 86 the french fries. Oh, my god. Wow. Fish and chips. We have the chips. We need to find out about all the tables that have french fries on their tickets that are not getting french fries. We are out of price for the fish and chips. What would you like? Sweet sweet fish fish? Fish. Yeah. 86 the sweet fries. 86 sweet fries. My car. We have nothing to serve after 86 every mini item. Die. Why are we 86 in the sweet fries? 86 sweet potato fries, we got the motherfuckers cooking. I don't get it. I'm just, I'm, I'm in pain here. Thank you. Oh, my God. OK, as my nightmare continues, we're out of sweet potato fries. Out of sweet potato fries? Yeah. Denise kept pulling stuff. And I'd have to walk to the table and tell him he, the food's not there. And I can only apologize so many times to somebody. I'm embarrassed by it. Do you want a hug? Oh, no. Oh. Oh. As the menu items keep dwindling. Folks, we're out of pot pie. I'll take it off your check, honey. I apologize. The diner's patience is dwindling as well. What about these? They left. They left? I've never seen anything like this. I've never seen anything no. so dysfunctional. I, I've never seen a kitchen work. So backwards. You can't keep customers waiting an hour for food and then 86 it. Find out the total amount that we can't I will, you, please? I will. Thank yes. you. Oh, Jesus. Uh, what the fuck was all that about? It's a ship channel. Honestly? Yeah. And is she always like that? Yes. How do you concentrate like that in you, service? You can't. I mean, you really can't. Why I mean, was she 86 and everything in the middle of I, service? I could not tell you. I've got 601 in boys and 150 almost in discounts. So that's $750 total. Wow. Yeah. I mean, that is ridiculous. It is. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Crazy. Gordon Ramsay has got to get through her thick skull. If she doesn't take his advice, we're not going to make it. I don't know where to start. I mean, I just, you know, I, I... That was a disaster. Do you know, we comped $800 worth of food. OK. You stop the team in the middle of service and show them how to put asparagus on the plate? We're focusing in all the wrong areas. How can you let it go this far? How can I you? Somehow I got, I got derailed. 
If I can simplify the menu down to something that's really manageable and we just do wonderfully simple, delicious comfort food. Yeah, listen, I'm so, going to stop you there because uh, I, uh, you're confusing me. Before you can talk about anything else, you've got to get the basics, right? You've got to get the core, the foundation. Because I think you've lost the plot. Okay. I, you, you, you need to sit down and have a think. Because what this restaurant hasn't got is a clear direction. And restaurants run from the top. It starts from the top. And when the leader's gone, the restaurant's gone. I, I, I don't know where to start. I'm sorry. Jeez. Can we get these mats out of here? Clearly, Denise is in denial about how she mismanages the restaurant. Take a seat, please. So this morning, Chef Ramsay decides to pull together a staff meeting before she arrives. OK. Right, that was a tough one yesterday, yes? Yes. Yeah, and the only way we are ever going to move forward is if we get out in the open. What's bothering you in the way that Denise is running the restaurant? Basically, when she's not here, it runs quite smooth. But when she comes in... The whole morale of the uh, restaurant just drops. She doesn't even have to say anything, but we know something's going to happen. We're afraid of what she's going to do. It's awful how she talks to the people. She goes up to one of the girls and tells them they're stupid, or she gets up to my face, tell her to fix her hair. You put a flower in your hair. That's why the customers aren't coming in, because you want to put a flower in your hair. She's getting too carried away. She focuses on a lot of the superficial things. She micromanages. It's insane. I mean, really insane. Last night, she went 86 crazy, right? Yeah. yeah. Nearly a dozen items. 86 the fish and chips, uh, 86 the beef. Is this normal? Yes. She doesn't take responsibility for anything. So why aren't we standing up to her? We're all afraid to tell her anything negative. Yeah. She'll fire them. She'll fire them, Gorgeous. Oh, yeah. She'll fire them? She told a couple of us, if you say negative things, I don't need you with me. I appreciate your honesty. However, you need to get that message across to Denise. You've got to start standing up for what's right. And I want you all to do that. Right now. Oh, God. Oh, my God. We're all going to get fired right now. This morning, Chef Ramsay has heard an array of grievances about Denise. She's getting too carried away. We're all afraid to tell her anything negative. He knows full well that for this restaurant to move forward, the staff needs to come clean with their boss. Oh, my God. Denise is coming. We're all going to get fired right now. Come over, please. Uh, right. I saw a lot yesterday, and I wanted to catch up with the team. And some of the crap they've had to endure and tolerate is actually quite horrific. I'm amazed that they're still here. I'm now going to ask them to open up and be honest with you. I didn't think we were going to have to tell her to her face what we thought. Debbie, please. Denise, you, um, you're a rude bitch. And I'm tired of it. I feel like I don't even know you anymore. You're just too mean with the, with the employees. You're talking yeah. to them like shit. Denise. You're the negative in the restaurant. You make me feel like I'm not good enough. Denise, I feel very unappreciated. I do anything you ask me, and you come in and scream at me. What is going on? Do you not trust me? Oh, Janet, I trust you. How do I know this? Unless you tell me. Wow. Thank you, Donna. Greg, please. Oh, it's, you're coming in, you're screaming, you're a hindrance on the lawn, you're a hindrance, you know, in the crap. You're controlling everything, and yet you've got a brigade front and back of house that are loyal and hardworking and can get the job done. Denise, your ego is huge, and you think because you're Denise Whiting, you can do anything. You have to stop feeling sorry for yourself, that nobody likes you. We've already established that. People don't like you. Tough love. But this is so important. Debbie, what's the matter? Um, 
most afraid about this place going out, out of business. After all I've put them through, I'm just so humbled and so grateful that they're still with me. To lose this business would be for me to lose my soul and I appreciate everything that everybody does here. I love each and every one of you. I've just been off. And I know that. I know I've come into the kitchen and I've been difficult. I'm sorry that I've been a bit overbearing. I'm gonna step back and let everybody do what they do so well. And I can only say that this is the beginning of a new day. She seems sincere now, but I'm a little doubtful about what she's gonna do as far as changing. Very doubtful in a way. Sad to say. Thank you. Now that Denise has recognized the morale problems of her restaurant, Hi, ladies. Chef Ramsey knows that he needs her to fully understand why the community continues to be upset with her. I put together a select group of people that I'd like you to hear from. OK. OK? Please, jump in the car. Headsets on. Listen carefully, and I'll come back. Oh my god, these people, they're going to crucify me. I'm going to be thrown to the wolves. Now, there's been some issues and some turmoil, and I would like to take this moment for you to help me to understand why Kathy Hun and its owner, Denise, have angered this community. Who would like to go first? What she really tried to do was appropriate an identity. It's like going to Australia and trademarking mate or y'all in the South. She's acting like a bully. Why is she a bully? Anybody who would like to use the word is at risk of receiving a cease and desist order. Uh, from her lawyers that says change your name or else and I have a website called welcome to Baltimore Hun and I cease and desist letter that she sent Wow, I mean that's pretty severe it transcends the restaurant industry She had gone to the Maryland Transit Administration for their Hun ad campaign and forced them to give her creative control. Basically, the Maryland state government has to go to Denise Whiting for her approval. Do you remember what that? Legally, she has the standing, but she's not in the right. No. And that's what people recognize. Yeah. It's just about money for her. It's not about Hamden. It's not about anything. It's just money. She pushes everyone around. She's focused on Denise Whiting. And if you don't like it, you're going to be sorry. I have seen her nasty. She's made a mockery of who we are and then tried to profit from it, and I think that's very egregious. The damage is done. All the citizens of Baltimore were the ones that stopped going. They are not going to go use that restaurant. No way, ever. What would it take for this community to embrace Kathy Hun again? She has to walk away from the, tra the trademark. She has to abandon it. She has to abandon it. claim to it, Get say it, it was a mistake. She does not own it. It doesn't belong to anybody. Right. I'm very grateful for your insight. Thank you so much for coming. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. How do you feel about what they said? It was a... Eye opener? Yeah. I didn't get it before. I was just so angry at all the things that were happening and didn't know how to handle them, and I was in denial. I get it now. That's hard in there. There's so much hate. What? Directed in, in, in my direction, there but was. You did no... go after a few people. You did send letters where they were absolutely freaking out to sort of stand up against. But when you threaten people or they feel threatened, they're going to revolt. Do you realize you've made a mistake? Yes. You have to do something. You have to take responsibility and make a gesture. Do you agree? 
I absolutely agree. You're not just saying that because I'm here. Oh, God, no. You know, yeah, we've got a big issue here, and, 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 and it's not me you have to convince, it's the city of Baltimore. Everything in my life has been a disaster in the last several months, and I'm the only one that can change that. However, I don't, I don't really know what I'll do. It appears as though Denise has seen the error of her ways, and so Chef Ramsay decides to go ahead with the renovation of Cafe Hunt. Morning, ladies. Good morning, morning. Chef. Nice to see you. Today is the beginning of a new era. Are you ready to see your new restaurant? Yes. yes. Welcome to New Cafe Hunt. Jump in, please. Oh my God, that is <laughs> gorgeous. Look at this beauty. Oh my goodness. Oh my God. I always wanted the wall pink. I always wanted boxes for the teapots. <laughs> always, always. Gorgeous. Gone are those hideous colors. Now we have a consistent, bright vibrance in the local restaurant. <sighs> Let's look at the huge, stunning artwork. That is a tribute to Hun. Glamorous, gorgeous, and something that belongs to the restaurant. Let's get that right. I love it. It's simple, it's elegant, and it's clean. Everything just kind of blends together so perfectly. I really feel like we have a future in Hamden. Can't help but love it. <laughs> Welcome to the Flamingo Room. Oh, wow. Oh, this is so adorable. Oh, is this a party room or what? Look at the chandelier. What do you think? <laughs> Come on. Oh, we love it. I am so happy. It's like the sun came up over the Cafe Hun on a gorgeous day. It's going to be better. It's going to be Thank better you. than it's Thank night. You. Thank you. With everyone clearly overjoyed about the physical changes to the restaurant, take a little lineup, have a look at this amazing <laughs> food. Chef Ramsay is now ready to unveil the revamped menu. OK, let's start off from the top, shall we? Hunt's chili, beef, tomatoes, onions, peppers, cheese, serve with some cornbread. Traditional and classic. Hun's hot crab dip. This one's done with Maryland crabs. Gorgeous. Next to that, you've got the mini shrimp and crab rolls. Delicious. And the entrees, obviously the Maryland crab cake. This one's going to fly out the door. Thank you. Oh, yes. I love you for that. Next to that, classic fish and chips. Crispy, delicious. There is no soggy batter there, let me tell you. Absolutely beautiful. Amazing. Next to that, you've got a delicious meatloaf wrapped in bacon, so with mashed potatoes, green beans, and obviously ketchup. Oh, that's delicious. beautiful. Yummy. Better is so much better. Get a knife and fork and dig in, dig in, dig in. Amen. Oh my god. Mmm. That's delicious. Really good. This is so perfect. This is better than I thought it could ever be. We could never have done this on our own. Fries are great. Mm -hmm. Don't you feel better? That's yeah. all streamlined. We're serving a brand new menu. It's just really simpler, but it's better food and it looks better. So we're all psyched to serve it. It's gonna be fun. Oh my god. Isn't that awesome? Mm -hmm. I'm having a mouth party. <laughs> <laughs> Now that the restaurant and menu have been vastly improved, Chef Ramsay knows that it is critical that Denise reach out to the community, and so he has made arrangements for her to do just that. This is an amazing opportunity. We're about to go live. You ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Good okay. luck. You may or may not have known, Gordon Ramsay's been filming here in town over the weekend. We've heard that he's bringing Denise Whiting, the owner of Cafe Hun, with him, and that they're gonna make an announcement of some sort on our show, and they just walked into the studio. Hello. Good morning. Hello, Gordon, how are you? Very well, Dee, thank you. It's been a busy couple of days for you, we're sure. Very busy. Uh, yeah, we've uh, yeah, we've gone to Helen back. It's been a tough week. I'm gonna hand you over to Denise. She's obviously very excited to be here. I just want to say, trademarking the word is not only almost killed me, but has just about killed the business. I didn't understand the whole culture and how passionate everybody was about, you know, Hun is in our hearts, and now I get it. I was just doing what business people do, and it was a misstep. I am so sorry for the animosity and the hatred and everything that trademarking a word, just a word, has done. Please forgive me. That must have taken a lot of courage to, to say that. But you never said you were going to give the trademark back. Is that what you're doing? You mean actually physically handing over the trademark? Yeah, yeah. Will you be handing it back? Do I want to do this? Maybe I don't. 
After alienating the entire city of Baltimore, Denise has an opportunity to make amends. You never said you were going to give the trademark back. Is that what you're doing? You mean actually physically handing over the trademark? Yeah, yeah. Will you be handing it back? Yes. Wow. This is amazing. I am taking that piece of paper that says it's registered. I'll get it from my attorney. I'll take it off the register. I can do that. That's, 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 <laughs> that's kind of stunning. This is for real? It was never mine to have in the first place. It's just a word. It's just wonderful to have this opportunity to be here to get, <sighs> I get a second chance. Please forgive me um, for everything that I've done. Denise, I gotta be honest with you. I wasn't on your side over the last year. I'm on your side now. Thank you guys. Thank you, Gordon. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. And this is an incredible opportunity that I've been handed and I'm not gonna take it for granted. All right, well, thank both of you for coming in this morning. Appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Maria's coming up next, it's 10 o'clock. Immediately following Denise's announcement on the radio, Chef Ramsey arranged for a press conference to make sure that everyone in Baltimore understands that Denise is giving up the trademark of the word hunt. I didn't mean to, to steal something or to take something, and I apologize. For the remainder of his stay, Gordon and his team got in the trenches with Chef Greg and his staff. Work as a team, work as a team. Where he implemented a new system. For me, it doesn't even look hot enough. Stone cold, come on, back in. And as Cafe Hun became a fun place to work at once again. Guys, you're doing a great job. You're doing awesome. John, thank you. Johnny, beautiful. The people of Baltimore returned. I appreciate your saying thank you, and I really want you to do well. And the business is clearly headed in a positive direction. These are fantastic. It's a lot better than the old stuff. This thing is off the champion. Touchdown. <laughs> Chef Ramsay took a lost owner and put her back on the road to success. And nobody realizes that more than Denise Whiting. With all the odds stacked against you, you pulled it off. I feel amazing. I've been given a gift, a great gift, and an amazing opportunity, and I will be forever grateful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I have a bloody tough thank week. You. I have my life back. I have my restaurant back. Thank you, Gordon Ramsay. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 See ya. Thank you, guys. Wow. Good night, hon.